Good morning, Devil's Lake. Rachel here with the Chamber of Commerce. And this morning, it is a beautiful Thursday morning. I am at the local um, Devil's Lake Fire Department with Fire Chief Jim Mo. How are you? I'm doing fine, Rachel. Thank you for being here this morning. Yes, thank you for taking the time on your schedule to fill us in on the fire department and what you guys do here. Well, we do a few things. Yes, I would say just a few, just a few. Um, so just to get us kicked off, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to start by asking, um, you know, there's so many different things that the fire department does um, within the community, and um, what is the overall mission or purpose of your organization as the Devil's Lake Volunteer Fire Department? Well, basically, what we our primary is uh, to respond in the emergencies in case of of need, mm -hmm. uh, mostly to structure firefighters or structure fires motor vehicle accidents, any type of hazmat uh, problems, and then provide education and training to the citizens of Devil's Lake so that they know that they are getting uh, what their tax dollars ask for. Sure, sure, okay. And um, you know, other than what most assume you do, fight fires, I know you just kind of touched on it a little bit, but what are some other duties, um, assignments, um, you know things that things that you guys do other than fight fires or fishing tournaments or fishing tournaments. <laughs> I think we're best known for the, a, a fundraiser that we have to do here with the big Devil's Lake fishing tournament. Plus, we get involved in the youth fishing yes. tournament. Yes. But really, we do have a lot more things going on than just running fishing tournaments. Yes. Which, that's the fun part of our job. Of <laughs> but we are, you know, we're do of course respond to emergencies. You know, such as I touched on as uh, structure fires, vehicle accidents, any kind of, you know, when there's a problem in the community, the phone rings here. You know, if it's to get a cat out of a tree or something, something unique, you know, they, they call the fire department mm -hmm. because they know that we'll respond to it and we'll do our best to make sure we take care of it. Yes. But there's a lot of things that are involved in it. We do a lot of uh, rental inspections. We do code enforcement, nuisance control. We, uh, uh, Let's see, we go to schools, we conduct presentations uh, about fire safety, we bring in, we do tours here at the station so yeah. that all the kids uh, as they're growing up will uh, have memories of what they were learning in the fire hall. Absolutely. You know, for what they're supposed to do in the event they have something happen at their home. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of education, a lot of presentations, and we, uh, of course, we're not fighting fires every day, which is uh, in our line of work, we don't want to be doing that. Exactly. So I believe that our education program and our presentations to the kids and we keep uh, coming up with new things every year to get you know excite the kids and mm -hmm. get involved in going home and saying hey this is what I learned you know in, in school at the station so yes. it's yeah. very important that we teach them that at a young age sure. and then they remember it for a long time sure um, touching on the school part um, you guys I would assume have to do a lot of training oh yeah Mm -hmm. um, so how often are you guys, your full time or your volunteers, going to different trainings or classes to learn more? Just funny you should mention that. Uh, every Wednesday is a training night for us. Oh, okay. One way or the other. Uh, we have business meetings and then we have training. But every Wednesday is ded dedicated to training. Okay. But then we have our paid staff is continually working because when we bring a raw new firefighter on board, they have no idea what a firefighter starts out at. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not familiar with anything. So we have to start at phase one and, and start teaching them how to put the gear on, what the gear is all about. And, how, and, and, and it takes a long time to uh, educate a new firefighter to become able to go inside a burning building. I so we spend a lot of time yeah. getting those people ready. Sure. And so people just wonder, you know, we're doing that throughout the day, putting the training plan together and then getting them in here and doing the soots. When the new one comes in, they spend like 16 weeks just learning on their own, so separate mm -hmm. from the training nights, to become a firefighter. Wow, that's a lot of time. There's a lot of time. It's a big yes. commitment, and that's sure. what some of the problem with getting volunteers in this world today throughout, not just Devil's Lake, throughout mm -hmm. the state or the nation, is because of the requirements. Even though you're a volunteer, you need to know the same thing as a career that's firefighter. Yeah. Sure. And speaking of which, can you tell me how many volunteers do you currently have and how many full-times? We have six full-time. That includes the chief, assistant chief, and then the four uh, other guys that are captains and lieutenants that will, they, they're in charge of truck crews. Okay. They, they uh, man the station 24-7, 365. Wow. 
And we have, uh, right now, our volunteer list is down. We try to, we want to be around the 33 to 36 mark, but we're probably about 28 right now. Okay. So uh, we're always looking for volunteers. We, if anyone has an interest, we would willingly talk to them and, and discuss what it takes to be a volunteer and you know, help your community. Yeah, and that is men or women, correct? Men, that's correct, yeah, we have two fire, uh, ladies on our department right now so we are firemen or firefighters not firemen anymore that I changed like that. Yeah. yeah so you know and uh it, we're open to you know, female male whatever yeah. you know if you've got the desire Great. to help your community and want to help out we're willing to listen to you sure and that's one thing i think is so awesome about the fire department here in devil's lake you guys go above and beyond for this community um and I know on behalf of the Chamber and Tourism, you guys help us out so much with volunteer opportunities. Um, you're there for us no matter what. Um, can you kind of just touch on some of the other things that you do for um, for the community as volunteers? Well, you know, we get involved in a lot. You know, we do the 4th of July parade. Uh, we help at the Rip Fest. You know, mm -hmm. these are outside events that, you know, that the community puts on that, you know, you. You need extra help and yep. you get a phone call can we participate you know and those are fun events you know the parade you know kids get involved our firefighters love it they get to take their kids or grandkids into the fire trucks and do that yeah and then the, and of course the rib fest you know it's a kind of a big major community event and it's growing mm -hmm. and uh, so there's a lot of fun things for kids to do there and uh, you know firefighters have a desire to cook so we want to also kind of compete a little bit yeah. and, you know to share our talents a little bit so but we get involved in that. We get involved uh, this past year, for instance, uh, got great reviews on uh, the truck going around with everybody cooped up because of COVID. We took Santa and Mrs. Yes. Claus around town in a scheduled kind of route mm -hmm. tour of the city so that the kids could wave and say hi to Santa. Oh, so, awesome. You know, yes. and, and so it, those are great things. And, and that's the fun part of the job as firemen. So we enjoy doing it. And uh, anytime there's something like that we can do that will spark some happiness a little bit, yes. we're willing to do something like that. Great. And I know, um, aside from being just volunteering, you guys also host your own ice fishing tournament, mm -hmm. which is a huge, um, huge event here in the community. It brings people from all over. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit? We can. In fact, um, I happen to be the one that started the very first ice fishing tournament here in Devil's Lake. That was started when I was a member of the Devil's Lake Eagles Club uh, okay. several years back. Actually, about well, it'll be about 38 years now because that's what our next tournament is. Next one, be. okay. So when we first started that, it started a lot smaller event than what it is today. It was started as two-man teams that were pretty much could go anywhere on the lake. They had a certain hour they had to be back to weigh in. And then we started experiencing some difficulties with that, so we made a change to how we structured it. And it still remained at the Eagles, and we converted it to where you had to be corralled into a certain location. And we sold 4,000 tickets at the time at $20 a piece. Still give away a vehicle. Yeah. And then we gradually increased it until at one point when the Eagles Club had to close due to financial problems. And so then at that time I said, hey, this is, you know, firefighters over here helped us a lot because I happen to be a member here also. Mm -hmm. So I incorporated our fire volunteers to help the Eagles. And so it was a logical place to bring it when the yeah. Eagles closed. So we decided to bring it here. We went through the process to get our gaming license and here's what we have today. It's a growing event. Uh, we're at 22,500 tickets. Wow. And it's an event that probably you can see it growing so much. Absolutely. It's amazing how early people are looking for those tickets because they don't want to miss out on that. They sure don't. You know, and the funding of it, of course, goes, uh, we've bought, you know, we've just ordered our last truck now and out. That way the whole fleet's now been completely replaced. The only truck that we didn't pay 100% on is the aerial truck. The city did uh, uh, do one, uh, one uh, two thirds of that. We did one third. Yep. So otherwise we paid and uh, purchased all the trucks. Sure, and just so um, you know, if anyone doesn't know, the proceeds from that tournament come here. That's correct, you know, yep. so if people don't win and they say, oh, I never win, just look at it that you made a, a good contribution a to a good organization. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. There's, 
beautiful machinery in here that you guys keep pretty darn clean. <laughs> well, we do our best. I mean, do you expect to come walk into a fire station, see it clean and ready to go? Oh, because yes. if that isn't the case, then you don't know what you're going to get in in case of an emergency. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Chief, can mm -hmm. you tell me um, if there were one to three or four um, pointers, safety tips that you could share with everyone um, in the community or any viewers watching, what would that be? Unattended cooking. In our lifestyle today, unattended cooking is one of the most leading causes of fires. And, and because of our cell phones, mm -hmm. uh, our, now we get involved in our computers because of Zoom meetings and etc. You know, so we quickly put something in the oven and we go and get involved in something on our computers or on our phones. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, your house is full of smoke and you've got a big fire growing. Uh, unattended cooking is one of our real big problems. A lot of problems is people with no smoke detectors or okay. CO detectors. Uh, CO is a de uh, odorless, uh, tasteless type of uh, gas and it's uh, a deadly killer. Yeah. So going without detectors is another problem. Space heaters is another problem. In the winter time when you've got space heaters, you know, people have tend to plug them in dura with other uh, things and they right heat up it. and yeah. put something close by, pets or something, mm -hmm. tip them over, you know, so those are three probably real serious uh, things that can cause some problems. Yeah, and so easy to avoid. It, very easy. Very Just got to keep beating it into everybody. Yeah. You know? And I try to do that on a weekly basis with our radio show with Radio Works mm -hmm. every week and bring up these pointers, but those are some of the things I keep you all upon because we keep still going to it. Yeah. Used to be smoking, but you know, in the world now that people have, uh, most people are quitting that, so our problems haven't been as bad with smoking as it has in the past. Yeah, well that's good. That's Which a great thing to hear. It's healthy for everybody. Yes, absolutely. Sure. So make sure you've got your fire detectors in your house. And you, and you watch your, watch your set food. a timer. Yep. yep. And, and um, be careful with those space heaters. Space heaters, if you're going to use them, because everybody seems to. <laughs> Don't alarm us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was waiting for that big, huge siren to go oh, off. Yeah, that's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one other question I'd like to ask you, Chief. Um, you know, as the organization you guys are here in the Devil's Lake community, um, and as a chamber member, can, what do you value the most about being the organization that you are? And what do you value about your relationship with the Chamber of Commerce? Well, our relationship's been excellent. Uh, you know, we, we're willing, our willingness to work together, you know, both sides. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's huge because you can get a lot done when you work as a team. Absolutely. You know, so uh, th those are real key. You know, we've worked with some people, some before, where it just seems like we're fighting everything that we do. Mm -hmm. But uh, with our Chamber and the people, employees out there and our employees, I, I mean, it's just a working relationship that we have is very valuable Absolutely. and so the cooperation when something has to be done what we're looking at what are we doing for the community not what we're doing for each organization yes. so I, I think that's important and uh, and, and what we do in the community we walk around and, and you know we tease the police department you know we're always called the heroes <laughs> and, you know and, and they because they get they got a job that usually makes people upset yeah we, you know we uh, the chief of our police you know him and i go back and forth you know he kids me about we go in and tear someone's house apart flood it with a bunch of water <laughs> and the next day they're bringing you cake and cookies or something like that <laughs> or they go in and they uh, you know bust the door down and they arrest somebody and then they're called all kinds yeah. of names so yeah. you know we, we have this little bickering <laughs> thing going back and you know we pride ourselves with we can walk through the community and hold our heads high because you know we're you know proud to be uh, part of the department because the community really appreciates what we do for them. Yes. We try to save them money in the tax dollars so we're buying our equipment, we're mm -hmm. raising money and showing good faith and, and that we uh, anytime they need help whether it's you know someone's got a squirrel in their attic or something you know you go and try you and say hey know. you don't know what you can <laughs> expect. And, you know, when the phone rings, you got to do your best to try to help out. So yep. As much as we even tried to catch a parakeet one year. So oh trying my. to catch a bird out of a tree is not so fun. Ah, we also We never did accomplish that. But anyway, those are things that we get involved in. When someone is really needs some help, they, they call us. Yeah. And, and that's a good feeling when you can walk away knowing you helped them. Absolutely. Well, we are so thankful to have you guys in our community. Um, you know, not just as as volunteers and as a part of the chamber but 
you know, for helping out and doing your job and keeping us all safe. So. And, and you know, and I want to just put it all on the volunteers because those guys are the ones that make us look good. Yeah. You know, so uh, and and their willingness to step up when they have to leave their jobs. You know, I want to thank all the employers in the community too to allow our volunteers to be able to leave their jobs, mm -hmm. come to an emergency, which hopefully uh, you know, we don't have too many of. Sure. But, you know, that's the time away, and most of the time those employers are still paying, paying yeah. them so they can give us a hand. So sure. That's uh, very important that we have the support of them also. So Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Chief. We so appreciate you and everything that you do, and all of your men and women here. And um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're a busy man. Hey, I thank you. <laughs> These are always good to do, you know. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of toot our horns a little bit when we can. <laughs> Just takes well, that well, one. I'm glad we could help out. <laughs> just takes that one oops to make us look bad too. You know, we keep that. We tell that a lot too. You know, you can do all these hundreds of the good things, and one oops will make a. Yeah. You know, so we got to keep. You know, try to keep everybody in line. So. Yes, you do a great job. Well, we, we try. <laughs> good leadership. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for watching. <laughs>